Every archaeological discovery is a bit like a treasure find. It's just that treasure doesn't always equal gold. Having said that, there are plenty of treasure discoveries that do involve gold. We have plenty of treasures for you to admire in this video. It's a feast for the eyes, so we hope you are hungry. In a discovery that adds new dimension to our understanding of ancient coin production, archaeologists have unearthed a rare artifact connected with the creation of Celtic coins in the Rus or Raus area of northeastern Bulgaria. The bronze matrix, a mother coin used to produce casting molds, features a stylized or Celticized head of Zeus, a motif found on the obverse of a type of Celtic silver imitations of the popular tetradrachms of Philip II, known as the Sattelkopfferd type. These coins, dating from the late 2nd to the early 1st century BCE, are among the most widespread in the Lower Danube region. The discovery of the mother coin used to create the necessary number of probably clay casting molds for the production of thousands of these coins provides invaluable insights into the technological aspects of ancient coin production. This find, one of the rarest numismatic discoveries in this part of Europe, underscores the advanced metallurgical skills of the Celtic culture in the region. The existence of coins suggests the existence of an advanced economy one that might have spanned vast land areas rather than being localized. Here's a treasure find that feels like a scene straight out of an adventure novel. An amateur archaeologist unearthing a clay pot brimming with 1,290 Roman coins dating back to the 4th century CE in Switzerland. The treasure hunter, Daniel Luden, was exploring near the 13th century Wildenstein castle when his metal detector started beeping. Upon digging, he found several Roman coins and pottery fragments. Realizing the significance of his find, he carefully reburied the treasure and alerted the authorities. The archaeologists were able to excavate the pot in a large earthen block and then CT scan its contents without disturbing them. The scan revealed an unexpected detail a piece of cowhide dividing the coins into two separate piles. The coins, made of a copper alloy with a small percentage of silver, were minted during the reign of Emperor Constantine. The discovery raises intriguing questions. Why was the hoard buried during a time of political stability? And what was the purpose of the cowhide divider? Could it have been an offering to the gods, or perhaps related to the boundary of three Roman estates? The mysteries of this coin pot continue to intrigue researchers, offering a tantalizing glimpse into the economic practices of the Roman Empire. In a thrilling archaeological discovery, a hoard of Roman gold coins, believed to be one of the largest buried in the UK, has been acquired by a museum in St. Albans for nearly £100,000. Found by a novice metal detectorist on private land in 2012, the hoard consists of 159 gold coins, dating from the 4th century, the final years of Roman rule in Britain. The coins, known as solidi, were likely buried for secure storage, or as a sacrificial offering. These valuable coins, not regularly traded, were primarily used for significant transactions. Struck in cities such as Milan and Ravenna under emperors Gratian, Valentinian, Theodosius, Arcadius, and Honorius, the coins were scattered across a wide area. The acquisition of the hoard was made possible with support from the Heritage Lottery Fund, St. Albans Museums and Galleries Trust, and an anonymous overseas benefactor. The coins will soon be displayed at Verulamium Museum providing a fascinating glimpse into the rich history of Roman Britain. The entire collection is now somewhat unimaginatively known as the St. Albans Hoard, although we suppose the name at least makes it clear where the coins came from. We're staying in the UK for another exciting archaeological find, because another Roman hoard has been uncovered on the grounds of the Euston Estate in Suffolk, England. The Hoard discovered by Martin White during a metal-detecting rally, consists of a collection of pewter plates, platters, bowls, and a cup dating back approximately 2,000 years to the Roman period. The items were found neatly stacked in a pit, potentially deposited as an offering or for safekeeping. 
The larger plates and platters were likely used for communal serving of food, while the octagonal bowls may have had a Christian reference. Similar hoards have been found in other parts of southern Britain, including nearby Roman settlements at Icklingham and Hockwold. Although the hoard does not meet the criteria for treasure under the 1996 Treasure Act, it has been generously donated by the 12th Duke of Grafton, Henry Oliver Charles Fitzroy, to the West Stowe Anglo-Saxon Village and Museum. Visitors can admire this significant discovery as part of an exhibit until January 2024, enhancing their understanding of the Roman period in West Suffolk. We're not yet sure where the hoard will go after that. In a remarkable discovery in Pimbarthi village, Telangana, India, gold and silver ornaments were unearthed while a homeowner was digging on their property. The incident occurred during the conversion of an 11-acre land into a residential plot. The plot owner, named only as Narasima, discovered a pot buried two feet deep in the ground, containing a treasure trove of gold and silver valuables. The recovered items include 22 gold earrings, 51 gold beads, 11 gold necklaces, and various other gold items. Additionally, silver sticks, chains, and other silver items were also retrieved and seized. The total weight of the gold ornaments was 6.68 ounces, while the silver ornaments weighed 3.75 ounces. A small ruby weighing 0.23 ounces was also discovered alongside the valuables. The copper pot itself weighed 2.65 pounds. The village council head, Anjan Nuyulagud, speculates that the artifacts could belong to the Kakatiya dynasty period, suggesting a rich historical significance. Further excavation in the region may unveil more items of historical value. Authorities have temporarily halted any digging activities until further notice. This extraordinary discovery provides a glimpse into the region's past and underlines the potential for more fascinating finds in the area. The West Yorkshire Hold, discovered near Leeds, England in 2008 to 2009 by a metal detectorist, is a significant find, comprising six gold objects, including four gold finger rings and a lead spindle whorl. This discovery holds national and international importance as it expands our understanding of hoarding practices in early medieval England and adds to the corpus of known gold rings from that period. The hoard consists of various intriguing items, such as a lozenge-shaped finger ring set with a cabochon garnet, a finger ring with an enlarged bezel, a finger ring with a round bezel believed to have held a relic, and another finger ring with niello panels. Additionally, there is a fragment of gold cloison jewelry, a piece of gold ingot, and a lead disc. The hoard's items date from the 7th to the 10th centuries, suggesting that they were preserved over several centuries. The interpretations of the hoard's purpose range from a thief's cash to belonging to a smith or jeweler, indicating wealth and high-status ownership. The West Yorkshire hoard is now owned by the public and displayed at Leeds City Museum, allowing visitors to explore the remarkable artifacts and delve into this captivating aspect of history. The Norris Law Hoard a remarkable silver hoard from the 6th century was discovered in 1819 at a small mound in Largo, Fife, Scotland. While much of the hoard was illegally sold or given away and subsequently lost, the surviving items were found later at the mound and handed over to General Philip Durham, the landowner. Currently housed in the National Museum of Scotland, the remaining 170 pieces of the hoard include both Roman and rare Pictish objects, primarily consisting of hack silver. Among the treasures are a penannular brooch, a leaf-shaped oval plaque adorned with Pictish symbols, a large hand pin, and a worn spiral finger ring. Incomplete items such as part of a Roman spoon, silver sheet fragments, and incomplete spiral bracelets also contribute to the collection. The silver pieces, valued for their bullion, were often traded or repurposed into new objects. Although the majority of the hoard was dispersed, the Norris Law Hoard remains a significant testament to the craftsmanship and historical significance of the Picts and Romans in Scotland during the 6th century. 
It's amazing to think that the Picts had no written language, and yet they were capable of creating such works of art. We don't mean to spend so much time on the British Isles, but there have been so many fascinating treasure discoveries made there in recent years that we can't help it. A collection of 37 silver Roman coins discovered near York has been declared treasure at an inquest. Known as the Overton Hoard, the coins were found in September 2016 on land near Overton, Yorkshire, along with pottery fragments. Some of the coins date back to 69 CE, during the reign of the Roman Emperor Vespasian, who oversaw the construction of the Colosseum in Rome. The hoard is believed to have been buried around 1,800 years ago, when York was the center of the imperial court, and it is connected to Emperor Septimius Severus and his family, who spent several years in York. The Yorkshire Museum has expressed interest in acquiring the hoard, which will be valued in the coming months. The declaration of treasure means that the coins will be offered to a museum for acquisition at a price set by the British Museum's Treasure Valuation Committee. We wish we could tell you why the coins were buried, but that's something that will likely never be known. The Thornbury Hoard is a remarkable collection of 11,460 copper alloy Roman coins, primarily radiates and numai, dating from 260 to 348 CE. Discovered in the back garden of Ken Allen in Thornbury, South Gloucestershire, England, while he was digging a pond in March 2004, it is considered the third largest hoard of its kind found in Great Britain. The coins were contained in a damaged grey ware pot, believed to have originated in Caldecott, Monmouthshire. After the discovery, the hoard was taken to Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery, where it was found to weigh 63 pounds and required two people to lift the bucket containing the coins. Following drying and chemical treatment, the coins were readily identified. The hoard was declared treasure, valued at £40,000 and acquired by Bristol City Museum and Art Gallery with funding from the Heritage Lottery Fund, the Headley Museum's Treasure Acquisition Scheme, and other organizations. The coins in the hoard range from those minted during the reign of Galenius in 260 to coins struck in 348 during the Constantinian dynasty. The majority of the coins were minted in the 330s and feature reverse designs depicting Gloria Exercitus, symbolizing the glory of the army. The hoard is comparable in size and composition to the Nether Compton and Bishopwood hoards. We are finally leaving the UK for our next treasure story. The Volchitran treasure was found by a pair of brothers working on their vineyard close to the Bulgarian village of Volchitran in December 28, 1924. It's the best late Christmas gift the brothers ever received. Historians in Bulgaria believe the treasure hoard to be the finest early Thracian treasure ever to be discovered in their country, and have dated it to around 1,300 BCE. Considering the items that make up the hoard are 3,300 years old, they are in fantastic condition. Each of the items in the collection is a receptacle of some kind. There's a pair of round platters, five domed receptacles with central handles, three cups, a jug, a trio of leaf-shaped vessels, and a solid gold bowl with two handles. While all of the artifacts are made from gold, all save for the bowl, have a mixture of 9.7% silver. That strongly suggests that they were made at the same time, most likely by the same person. The entire collection now resides within the National Archaeological Museum in Sofia, where it's considered to be one of the museum's most valuable assets. The Kumbaya artifacts of Colombia are beautiful decorative artifacts and fine examples of ancient craftsmanship. Is there more to them than that, though? The objects, which range in age between 2,300 and 3,000 years, are sometimes also called the Tolima artifacts and have only ever been found in the region around Bogota, the country's capital city. More than 100 of them have been discovered so far. While many archaeologists consider them to be nothing more than stunning examples of zoomorphic figurines, they don't all appear to be based on living creatures. Some of them can easily be identified as bats, birds, fish, or insects. 
but others don't look like any other known creature. It's these anomalous artifacts that pose a problem, because rather than being based on animals, they appear to have distinct fuselages, wings, stabilizers, and other features that you'd find on a modern aircraft. They also have perfect aerodynamic properties, by which we mean that if you scaled one of them up and launched it, it would be capable of flying and gliding. How could such knowledge be available to people living so long ago? In May 2022, friends and metal detectorists Dave Allen, Mick Ray, and Robert Abbott set off on a weekend camping and detectoring trip to a site in Wiltshire, England. To their amazement, they went on to discover a hoard of 161 ancient Roman coins directly beneath their campsite. The coins turned up just six paces from where they'd pitched their tents in a field not far from the ancient village of Pusey. The precise value of the coins has never been publicly disclosed, but it's safe to assume the valuation will be in the tens of thousands of dollars. A significant proportion of the value comes from a single Roman silica coin, which is around 1,600 years old and extremely rare. There are other silica coins in the hoard, along with Miliarinz coins, all of which were minted between 340 and 402. The coins are in near mint condition. Many of them are in better state than the coins you're likely to carry around in your pocket, wallet, or purse. It's highly likely that the newly minted coins were buried deliberately during the final years of the Roman Empire's presence in England by citizens looking to protect their wealth from raiding parties of Saxons. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.